Hey, hey, party people. Today we're going to draft a sleeve pattern. So if you've been following along in the garment construction playlist, I had guest lecturer Mariah here on the channel and she drew the basic bodice and then she drafted, or she copied the muslin draft onto paper patterns. Here's the front and here's the back. These are her patterns. And so we're going to draft a sleeve pattern that goes with this bodice pattern. And essentially what you would do is you would cut all three pieces from back sleeve uh, onto muslin or some similar fabric, fit it on your fit model, and then make adjustments to your bodice block. The materials you'll need today are some pattern drafting paper. I have dot paper, this is what people call dot paper, D-O-T because it has all these little numbers and letters here that kind of look like dots from far away. And I have a lot of these supplies in my Amazon recommendations list. If you can't find dot paper, you know, you can use craft paper. Um, some people like to use oak tag, but I like to use that for final patterns because it's such stiff paper and anything I'm like folding and manipulating, I don't like to use that heavy oak tag uh, for those kind of drafts, okay? Those are for final patterns for me. You're gonna need a graph ruler, 18 inches is pretty good. You're gonna need some scotch tape. I like the stuff, the magic tape in the green box because you can draw on it. This is an awl, it has a sharp point and it's to make punch holes. And punch holes are used in pattern making to mark the placement of pockets, darts, uh, all kinds of things and a red pen. Anytime you make a punch hole in a pattern, you wanna mark it with a circle around the punch hole so that people pay attention. Punch holes are kind of easy to uh, miss. So, you know, the way she had it here, always mark your punch holes with the red dot. So these two tools should always go hand in hand. Pencil, eraser, you know, I really like a super skinny pencil, uh, like a harder lead pencil for pattern making so that I'm the most precise I can be. I do use a fatter, darker pencil for filming so you all can see everything that's happening on camera. So things get a little messy on camera, but I'm just really trying to make sure you all see everything. But, you know, aim for skinnier and lighter for you. And then of course, an eraser. Paper scissors, not to be confused with fabric scissors. These are my nice fabric scissors. These just can be tucked away while you're making patterns, okay? I have this pencil here. It's a color pencil. It's a mechanical color pencil. This is just a, a demo tool. You're not gonna need one. All right, first thing you wanna do is cut yourself a piece of paper. This is 32 by 24 inches and then fold it in half. We are going to you know, draft the full pattern, you know, on one side, because it's mostly symmetrical, the pattern. And then we're gonna open it up and make adjustments to the front and back of the sleeve. Next, we're gonna draw the cap line. The cap line is the very tippy top of your shoulder. Uh, sorry, it's very tippy top of your sleeve pattern, which is the point where it gets sewn into the bodice. And so two inches from the top of your paper, perpen perfectly perpendicular, 90 degree angle from the fold, draw your line. Now, you're also gonna, next you're gonna draw the wrist line, okay? The wrist line. If you have a fit model or you have measurements already, then use that measurement, okay? Um, for the sample size that Mariah had kind of started with, I would go with 22 and a half, 22 and three quarters, somewhere around there. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna measure out, 22 and a half. And that's your wrist line. So next we have to determine the bicep line and the cap height. So I want you to take your bodice. I'm gonna stick a little piece of paper here and we're gonna line up the pattern front and back. Just 
put a little paperweight here. Okay. So we're going to measure from down here to the point of the shoulder. So this coming from the armpit, which is your bicep line, to your cap height, we're going to measure that off of this pattern. This is the last time I'm going to say it. If you have a fit model you're working with, you've already measured this, use that measurement. If you don't have a front and back pattern, you should start there. You need to work off from your front and back pattern to create a sleeve that works with your front and back pattern. I have another piece of paper tucked back here. We're gonna do this. Always measure from your sole lines and not the edge of the paper. The edge of the paper includes your seam allowance. So there's the, right here, that's your shoulder. From my armpit to the top of the shoulder is going to be six and three quarters inches. Personally, I think that's a little bit deep. I think that this armhole is a little bit on the low side, but don't, don't overthink that too much. We're gonna draft this and then put it on a fit model. So. I think for a size six, it should be closer to like a six and a quarter, maybe, but whatever. So that's your bicep line. Now we're going to draw the elbow line. The elbow line is from the bicep line, and you can mark these in case you start getting confused. This is your bicep line. That's your wrist line. And so you want to do half of this distance plus half an inch. So 15 and three quarters divided by two. So that's 63 over four. Divided by two equals 63 over eight. How many times is that going to be? That's seven and seven eighths. And then plus half an inch, which is four eighths equals eight and three eighths. Okay, so that's that. If you wanna do it on a calculator, be my guest. But I have warned y'all that, you know, learning fractions is good for pattern making. So eight and three eighths from the bottom, okay? The bicep line to the elbow line is the smaller distance. And here's our elbow. Now we need the width of the bicep. So the circumference of the upper arm at the bicep line. For a size six, I'm gonna go six inches. You're gonna do the same at your elbow. I'm gonna go five inches for a size six. And then you're gonna connect these points to create your underarm seam. That's your underarm seam right there. And now we're gonna be doing some folding. Remember, this is our cap line. This is a tracing wheel. It has a bunch of spikes and it allows you to poke holes through your paper so that you can see the holes on the paper underneath it. This is the back cover of an old sketchbook I had laying around. I like to put something under my paper whenever I'm using my tracing wheel. So I'm just gonna trace my cap line a little bit. I'm gonna mark the other side. And then first we're gonna fold it down so that your cap line hits your bicep line. So you see the bicep line there? We're gonna fold that in half and Crease the paper, okay? Another reason why I like to use the thin paper. I'm gonna crease that line. And then you're going to fold it in half lengthwise. Fold along that underarm seam that we had before. So we're turning it into quarters. There we go. And we've opened it up. Here's the crease line there. So that's the intersection that you want. From this point where the bicep line meets your underarm seam, 
come in an inch. That's two and a half centimeters. And then from this intersection, go up three quarters of an inch. We're gonna connect this and this. Oh no, I forgot to mention before, we'll also need a French curve today. Oops, sorry about that. All right, now take the French curve and you're going to position it so that first, you're going to curve so that you're hitting this point, the original bicep underarm point and sitting it along this curve. And then you're gonna take your French curve and then go up to the cap line, use that curve like so. And now you've created the arc here. <gasps> I still think the cap line is too high, but maybe Maybe my model is a little, got a little extra deltoid. All right, now that we have the outside line, you're gonna cut the whole thing out. So here's your sleeve. It has no seam allowances on it, but we need to make adjustments first. So we needed to cut it out so we have the full sleeve without redrawing this whole side. Otherwise, what would be the point? And keep in mind that whenever you look at any sort of bodice, the front armhole is gonna be carved out more than your back. So you see how it's scooped out more and this one is longer and higher and it wraps around to the back? And that's because our arms move forward a lot, but not back so much. And we need that kind of a little bit of access and ease to move our arms forward because we're constantly moving our arms forward. So we're gonna scoop that out. At this curve, we're gonna carve out a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna redraw this curve. It still goes to zero here, okay? You don't wanna mess up that measurement. Do you see this line here, this fold line? Okay. That's a quarter, 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 quarter. And there's that quarter line. Cutting out should not go past the quarter line. Okay, so now that we've scooped out the front some, we need to add our back dart. Okay, so we're gonna cut at the elbow line. all the way to the middle. Do keep in mind that this fold line is gonna be your grain line. And then we're gonna cut along that center fold. Almost, not quite, still attached. Okay. And we're gonna open this up. Take a little scrap of paper, put that underneath. So we're gonna open this up so that this gap is half an inch to five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna put that there, and put that there. And you can see that's a half inch gap. And then we're gonna go ahead and tape this down. Now we're gonna fold this dart and we're gonna create a three and a half inch long dart. It's the dart is not gonna go all the way to the center seam. So mark that three and a half inches up there. And we're going to fold this dart. So once we've folded it, 
we're going to take our tracing wheel and we're going to trace along that edge so that we can see that we're cutting here. And then That's your dart, half an inch in from the dart is going to be your punch hole. So you're gonna punch your hole and then you wanna mark your punch hole with a red line so people notice it. And these lines are gonna be here so you can notch your dart later after you add your seam allowance. Now. The last thing to do, or one of the last things to do, is to true this line because now you have an awkward angle. And now you have to walk the pattern into your bodice. What does that mean? That means that you have to move the pattern onto the seam so that you're kind of mimicking sewing paper so that you know that the sleeve seams, they're all gonna match up. Remember this edge is the sew line. And this pencil line is the sew line because this one has seam allowance. So we're gonna go here and we're walking the pattern. That's where the notch would be. And then here's the back. We're going to mark our notches. And there's that. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, Zoe, that's the end of that, and that's the end of that, and you have all of this unaccounted for armhole. Okay. That's going to be the ease. Now, this Amount of, this is a curved ruler. It's like rubbery and measures curves. So we're going to measure this curve. And this is an inch and three quarters. And that is a lot. I think it's a little too much. And which makes sense because I kept saying how I thought it was too weird. And I thought that the sleeve cap was too high. You want like an inch ease or so, you know, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter maybe. An inch and three quarters is too much ease, okay? And so at this point, what I would do is I would carve down this height because, you know, we've already talked about this. So I'm gonna fold it back up. I'm gonna drop it half an inch. I'm gonna drop that curve in here. like that. I'm going to cut that out. Get in the habit of cutting with your scissors flat on the table. It does give you more control. So let's walk the pattern again. That is an inch and one sixteenth ease. Perfect. And you know, an inch is 2.54 centimeters. Look at that. I was right the whole time and I'm feeling very smug about it. <laughs> 
Listen, I know that there's a debate. Uh, sleeve cappies versus no sleeve cappies. And I'm not going to get into the pros and cons. That's for pattern making geeks. I love pattern makers argue about it, but we're not going to get into that today. If you can Google it yourself if you want. Okay. But this one, it has sleeve cappies. And when you sew it, what's going to happen is you're going to sew this and this. Okay. Just straight up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to ease all this in. So this notch to notch is going to be ever so slightly gathered into the smaller armhole measurement so that it creates a slight cupping over the shoulder but you don't want to see any of the gathers you just want to create the the slight rounding into uh the armhole and if you want a video on how to do that drop me a comment below okay but this is where we're at right now. And yes, you do want the front shoulder notch to be a little bit more forward. You do want it tipping a little bit forward like that. And then this back notch to be a little bit closer to the center. Okay. Now you're going to add seam allowance to this whole thing and you're gonna mark it. Okay, that's Mariah's, this is me. Style number 1000, sleeve, size six, cut to self, and you're gonna cut out all these pieces and fit it on your model. And then you're gonna make corrections. All right. As usual, drop me your questions in the comments below. Check out the entire garment construction playlist if you haven't already, so you can watch all the videos that we did before this one. And I will see you in the next episode. Video, episode. Video, what do you want to see me pattern draft next? Drop it in the comments. All right, let's go.